Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Fuentes uh, here again. Uh, what we're going to do is um, do a class on one of, I believe this is going to be our last machine class. Metal work, worker is one of the um, probably most versatile machine in, in the shop for what it's used for. Um, it is used basically for multiple cuts and when we get into uh, the coupons, cutting strips with coupons, which you guys are going to do eventually, and for some other students, you've already done it a while. And the versatile cuts or the, um, the multiple cuts make it a lot easier than using the chop saw or the cutoff saw or even a hand file. So what we're going to do for the metal worker we're going to get into the same things that we have in the last couple of classes. We're going to do the orientation of the machine. We're going to do the pre-inspection before we use the machine. We're going to use the metal selection. We're going to talk a little bit about measuring. And of course, we're going to do the cleanup after we're finished. The metal worker itself does uh, a lot of different uh, cuts. And you could utilize the metal worker for almost all the metal that we have in the shop. Solid, angle, I-beam, anything that we have to be able to have to cut, we can. This cuts punches. Inside the machine here, you could throw your metal inside once you get this guard up that comes up. And the guard comes up by loosen it up. This is where your metal comes in and you take it inside there and it punches um, like the sides of flat uh, pieces of metal or even sheet metal. So it'll punch uh, a slot out of it. On the opposite end, on this side, if we have to do some spot welding on a piece of metal, this goes in there and it cuts a hole or a punch that you could use it for uh, spot welding. Spot welding, you put a piece of metal as a backing, you put the punched hole on top and you weld the punched hole to the one, the backing. So that is spot, uh, spot welding. So that's another part of the metal worker. What I'd like to show you to be able to make sure you understand what we're working with, this plate right here is for solid stock. Solid stock, if you, if you take a look at this, this is round stock. And the round stock, this is about five eighths of an inch, will fit in one of those holes and it will cut, once we get the measurement right, it'll cut and it'll keep cutting, like I said, the multiple times. The second plate, these, this right here is for I-beam and larger round stock. So the I-beam comes in this way and this way. The plate down in the bottom, which you can adjust up or down, this one is for flat stock and it has the guides right here so you could guide it in there and, and keep it square. Because sometimes if you put the metal in, sideways like this, you're not gonna get a good square cut. So you have to have that up against that guide and when the when the uh, the shear comes down, then it'll be a nice flat flat cut. Over here, we have our normal E stop. This is the emergency stop. Before you make sure that you try to turn it on, it's got to be out. And if there's any emergency, that's what this is for. Press that and it'll stop. That's like all the machines that we have has an e-stop. Well, 
the majority of my machines have e-stop. Down here on the control area, this is your main switch right there. The main switch is one that turns on the electricity or the main power. You have this button on the left that goes either from the automatic cut to a remote cut. And I'll explain that as we go. So when you turn the power on, turn the power off, this is either side, right side or left side, whichever one we're using, right? And this, uh, this right here is also another selection that if we were gonna use that part of the machine. So as I stated before, when we were um, going through the cutoff saw, that this is a shared electrical cord. The electrical cord from the cutoff saw is this right here. This is the electrical that comes down from the roof. So when we get ready to turn this on, what we need to do, remember this locks, unlock it. Now these have a pattern on it. So when you look at it, if you don't put the pattern the way it's supposed to, it is not going to plug in. Once you get it plugged in, you're going to turn it to the right or if you're holding it like this, and it'll lock. If you don't lock it, you might be working and somebody will come by and it'll just pop it right out. That goes for all these machines, like my drill press and everything else. On the back side of the machine, the things that I wanted to show you, these are guards. When the metal comes through, this guard will come up and out of the way. So you got to be careful when you're operating this machine that these, your hands aren't anywhere near the guards, right? This is a guard down here. This is a guard. And then if this one would come up, it's a guard also. This right here. Um, gives you the chance to do your multiple cuts. If you take a look right now, this is in here in the solid or um, solid metal that we can go through and cut it to be able to adjust the, the size. The shear actually comes and cuts along the, the piece here and also underneath here, right? So all these places, the shear comes through and cuts it right off. One of the things about this machine that is different than any of the other machines that we have talked about in the last couple of months, this is a two-person operation. The one person is back here making sure that everything is clear. All the pieces are back and it goes into the cage. And also it tells the person who's operating the machine that it's clear no hands are close to the shear. Now, um, I'm going to go across the, the shop and I need to get my second person.